You can cook with it, fry with it, bake with it. You can season cast iron with it. My oldest uses it to boil leather. And you can even use it in your homemade body products. Hi, this is Shana with Against the Grain Homestead. And today we're going to be talking about rendering lard. So lard comes from pork fat and tallow comes from beef fat. Okay, so right here, you can see here is some lard. This is very white, and here is some lard. There are three main types of pork fat that can be rendered into lard. The first and most plentiful and most common is the back fat. It lies just under the skin along the back of the animal. Like I said, this is the most plentiful and the most commonly used. Um, once it's rendered, you can get it pretty white, but it kind of um, will almost always have a little bit of a cream color to it. It won't be, normally, it won't be as white as the next kind of fat, leaf fat. Okay, so the back fat, you can use it for frying and cooking, boiling cast iron, or seasoning cast iron, oiling leather, you know, pretty much anything you want to use it for. You can even bake with it, but if it's not leather rendered properly, um, it can have a little bit of a pork flavor to it, so you want to be careful, you know, you want to make sure that it's flavorless because you probably don't want your pie crust to taste like pork. Okay, so the leaf fat is the next one. Leaf fat lies mostly around the kidneys, but it can also be around the belly. It's very prized and it's very white and clean, it doesn't have a pork flavor or smell. Um, it's highly prized in baking, okay, so like your pie crust, whatever type of baking that you'd like to do, that's really where you would reserve the leaf fat rendered down for. Then the third is the call fat, also called lace fat. And this is a thin membrane that surrounds the stomach. And you don't render it. What you do with it, you just rinse it and then package it and store it. It's primarily used to like wrap around maybe a tenderloin or something that another slab of meat, okay? So you'd wrap it around, it has a bacon flavor, so you'd wrap it around a slab of meat and then cook it. But back fat and leaf fat are rendered the same way, and that's what we're going to show you here. Before we get started showing you how to render lard, I want to quickly go over um, omega-3s and omega-6s. Okay, just going to be quick. All right, so just like with beef and chicken or poultry and eggs, um, pork is pretty much the same way. Any animal that is raised, I like to say, as God intended, um, you know, eating what God provided, natural foods, no GMO, no junk, no fillers, none of the horrible stuff that, uh, you know, feedlot cattle are, are fed and, you know, confined pork and other animals are fed. Anyway, if they are fed and eat as God intended, they naturally have higher omega-3s. And omega-3s are good for you, right? Well, if they're fed this junk, and you know in these ungodly conditions um they are higher in omega-6s okay so just like whenever you you know when you go to the grocery store you know and you choose maybe you know grass-fed beef or organic beef versus you know a uh, feedlot beef when it comes to rendering lard you know it's it's much the same way so you want to get a uh, pork fat that you know was raised good and fed good so the pork fat that we get once a year, we go, we make a four hour drive and we get two hogs each year. And this guy, he raises them as God intended. He has some land that's fenced in and the hogs, they just run and live their life. And um, when he does, if he does need to feed them some grain, um, he actually has a deal worked out with, uh, with an organic non-GMO uh, corn grower so they actually make a deal you know the guy will give him corn when and if he needs it you know and he gives them pork anyway but he's an actual organic um, hog supplier today because I have a quite a bit to do we're going to be rendering the lard in a slow cooker if you're interested in rendering lard on top of a stove in a Dutch oven I do have a blog on that I will put it in the link below so we have our pork fat, and it cuts better if it's frozen or partially frozen, because if it's completely room temperature and thawed out, it'll be kind of mushy and fatty and greasy and kind of hard to cut 
into nice little chunks. Okay, so I unwrapped some pork fat here. All right, so um, in order to get your lard to not taste so porky and not smell so porky, you want to remove any extra meat or skin that there may be because that's where the flavor and the smell comes from, okay? And this butcher, they processed it different than they used to. Um, they kind of cut it into strips. Okay, so we just want to cube it up into little cubes. Um, one good thing about using, about doing this, cutting up your pork fat on a wooden cutting board is when you're done, your cutting board is going to be seasoned, oiled as well. All right, so we're just going to do this for all of them, for this, these whole two packages that you saw, and I will put them in the crock pot. Okay, so this little meat here, we're just going to cut this off. We'll feed it to the dog later. So while we're still on here, let's just sort through here. So this little bit of meat right here, this will be something else that we cut off. Um, these little brown bits here that looks like there might be some skin, we'll cut that off. Most of it looks pretty good though. And then we'll do the next package. We have all of our pork fat. In the, crock, in the slow cooker here, and this can take anywhere between 8, 10, maybe 12 hours completely render down. So any little bits of meat or skin that I happen to miss that's on here, um, they'll kind of, they'll turn brown and they'll rise to the top and they'll be cracklings and they're really good, salted. <laughs> you want to turn it on a very low heat. Um, I'm actually going to turn mine on warm. So because this actually cooks hot, that's why. Um, but you want this on a low heat. You don't want it too high, you know, because then it can kind of burn it and give it a not a very good taste. Um, but you don't want it super low to where it's not really doing anything. So we'll come back and show you what this looks like after it starts rendering. You can see where it's starting to get, you know, shiny. It's glistening because it's warming up. Over here, this is some extra, um, I had a little sandwich bag of pork fat that I found in the freezer, so I went ahead and dumped that in there as well. All right, and I suggest using a wooden spoon when you go to stir this. That way, <laughs> your wooden spoon gets all nice and, and oiled up. Okay, so we're just going to dig through here, see if we see any, okay, you can see there's a little bit of moisture down there, of the fat melting. So every so often I come over here and I just stir this. Because the slow cooker, you know, it heats from the bottom. So you get these pieces on the bottom that's more, you know, that's more brown and the top pieces are still pink. So you just want to keep this stirred up so it can kind of heat evenly. <clears throat> the pork fat has been rendering down for a few hours now. It's been on warm and it just wasn't going quite fast enough. So I turned it up to low see, about 30 or 45 minutes ago. So you just want to make sure that you keep it stirred up because you don't want the fat to kind of burn because it does get brown, but you don't want it to burn and have an off taste to your lard. Definitely do not want to put a lid on it. You want the water to be able to evaporate and to escape. Kind of give you a little update here. Remember, you just want to keep it stirred around. Okay. And it is getting late. I am very tired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off for the night and stick it in the fridge. And then I will pick back up with it tomorrow. And you can do that. It's perfectly fine. Okay. So this was in the fridge overnight. And you can see... The lard that it was already rendering to is solid. So I put this back in the slow cooker. I'm going to turn it on warm just until it starts to melt some more, until all that melts. And then I'll turn it back on low and we will finish the rendering process. It's cooking down more and we will start bottling up some of this lard soon. 
To filter this, I use a fine mesh reusable coffee basket on top of a coffee filter on top of a funnel. Once the lard inside the jar is completely cooled, then I put the lid on it. And you can see here that the lard is starting to solidify. And here it is completely solid and completely all done. And here are the pork cracklings. These are very tasty salted. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.